I've been cruising for years and I've stayed in balcony cabins on Norwegian cruise ships in the past, so when I embarked Norwegian Prima and found my cabin, I thought I knew what to expect. When I first walked into the room, I genuinely had to check the deck plans to make sure that I'd been assigned the standard balcony cabin that I'd booked. The cabin felt so bright and open and spacious, and I've stayed in mini suites on other ships in the past that were smaller than this. I stayed in cabin 13730, right in the middle of deck 13, and I can confirm this is a standard balcony cabin. The first thing that I noticed was this incredible mural on the wall behind the bed. I think it would be pretty difficult to miss that. I love this subtle uplighting and the butterfly design, and this is the same in all of the cabins across the cabin grades. Little did I know that I would find things that surprised me in every single corner of this cabin, from the bathroom to the wardrobes, there were things I'd never seen on a cruise before. I noticed the big sofa complete with cushions and a desk on the other side of the room. Here I found the first of the big drawers that I affectionately named my bits and bobs drawer. I'm pretty sure that one's a British phrase, but I'm sure you get the idea. It's kind of the same as saying odds and ends, bits and bobs. It's a drawer that's perfect for all of those everyday things like chargers and hairbrushes that normally end up cluttering up your cabin. This drawer was huge and as I tested it out I realised that it was soft clothes, which was amazing. Moving further into the cabin I noticed that there was a lot of space under the bed. I'm a big fan of putting my suitcase under here so that I can tidy away my dirty clothes throughout the cruise, so this was fantastic. It was really easy to pull it out and push it back under. At one point I did test out the space under the bed and I could have quite happily slept under here if I wanted to. When I shared this photo online I had lots of comments that said things like don't go down there, think of the dust. Well I can confirm from being down there that it was spotlessly clean and I wanted my review to be thorough so you know. The cabin was cleaned every single day of the cruise and our cabin steward was fantastic. He would say hi to us every time we left for breakfast or we came back for an afternoon nap and because of the amazing makeup room buttons he always knew what we wanted, but more about that later. Speaking of naps, this bed was so comfortable and I slept really well during this cruise. The bed can either be made up as twins or a double and there wasn't that noticeable dip that sometimes you get when you have a double bed that's made of two beds, it was just one big lovely bed. The two pillows were huge and the TV opposite was great for checking things like the daily schedule or our onboard account. When I was testing out the comfort of the bed, I looked out the balcony and noticed that these chairs were different from any I've seen on a cruise ship before. Usually you just get the standard metal or plastic chairs, but these were really, really comfortable and they actually reclined a little bit. This was the absolute best place to enjoy a sunset and I just think sunsets at sea are so much better than on land. I mean, look at this. There was a decent table here too, and looking out around the ship, I realised that we had a really good location. The corridors were in a similar design to the cabins, and the triangles on the floor actually point forwards. I think this may be a nod to the older Norwegian ships, where they would sometimes have fish on the floor swimming forwards, and I love that because I have no sense of direction. Next to our bed were two bedside tables, mine was the bigger one so I think I just pulled the lucky straw there, but both had not only the regular USB A's, but also USB C's, which is the newer kind and amazing. I usually use a USB-C charger to charge my phone, so being able to just plug it in here and not worry about adapters and things like that, that was great. There was also a US plug socket behind the bed and a light switch which turned off the main lights. I took a cruise a few years ago on Norwegian Encore and I remember also having a light switch like this, which I loved. It felt so good to get into bed and then turn off the lights. Normally I get into bed and then I think to myself, oh, forgot to turn off the lights, but that was not a problem here. Looking across the desk, I noticed a little cupboard and I wondered what was inside. It probably won't come as a surprise to you if you have cruised before, but this was a mini fridge. It comes stocked with a few things that you can buy if you'd like, but you're always welcome to just use the fridge for anything else you have. There was a hairdryer here too, and it was very powerful, better than my hairdryer at home, that's for sure. I tested it on my dry hair here just to show you the power in this video. The hairdryer also had a holder, which was cool. Quite often it will take up space in the drawers, but this left my drawer free for all of those bits and bobs that I mentioned earlier. There were lots of mirrors in this cabin and I usually use this part under the main mirror to store my sunglasses. I always lose my sunglasses when I cruise, but having a space where they could go meant that I never lost them on this ship. As well as USB-C's and A's and US plug sockets over by the bed, there were another three US sockets and a European socket on the desk. The cabin certainly is well equipped in terms of power and this wasn't even my best use of tech in the cabin. It gets better. It was at this desk that I sat to do a live stream over on my YouTube channel. The internet speeds on this cruise were fantastic and the live stream was an hour long, but it didn't buffer and it didn't break once. I don't think I've ever had that on a cruise before. 
One of my favorite design features in this cabin were these baskets in the wardrobe that I used to put my t-shirts and my trousers in. They provided us with lots of extra space and because they were baskets, I could instantly see what was in there without having to root around. The closet space was split into three and the first area had lots of hanging space and a bit below where we stored our shoes. In the second and third areas, there was more hanging space. There were plenty of drawers, a safe, and this part, which you can actually turn into another shelf if you wanted to. We stayed in this cabin for a week and we had plenty of space for all of our stuff. There were only two of us sharing this room though. So if there were three or four of you, I imagine you'd have to be a bit more organized, but having all of that extra space under the bed definitely does help. On a lot of cruises, I have to use the wardrobe space to store my suitcase, so not having to do that was a nice touch. Heading into the bathroom, I immediately noticed how big the room felt, and in particular, how big the shower part was. I thought this part under the mirror was very pretty too. I've had showers on cruise ships in the past that were literally half the size of this one, and not only was it a good size, but it was also pretty powerful. The shower head had lots of settings and my favourite was the massage setting that felt as though it was kind of tickling your head. I usually much prefer baths to showers but if I had a shower like this in my house I might change my mind. Probably not but maybe. There was always shampoo and shower gel to use and the water never leaked out of the shower into the main bathroom which was amazing. I loved the overall look of the bathroom and it was here that I found another drawer for more of my bits and bobs. I don't think I've ever had a drawer like this in a bathroom before and it was amazing to be able to put everything in one place without having to keep emptying and repacking bags. There was also lots of storage on the side and all of the space under the sink was free for storage too. On a cruise you can have your towels changed every day but I usually opt to use them a couple of times. The secret cruise ship code is that if you want them changed you leave them on the floor and if you're okay to use them again you just put them back on the rack. I liked how the rack for the towels was on the side rather than behind your head when you're on the toilet. It's not always all that pleasant to be sat on the toilet and be surrounded by towels particularly if they're damp. It's a bit weird. There was a lot of space around the toilet too, which was good. A friend of mine, Tony, describes himself as a fluffy cruiser and he reviewed this cabin from a plus size perspective and rated it very highly. Outside and by the main door was my favorite feature of this cabin. On a lot of cruise ships, you'll find a little piece of paper that you'll hang on the door handle if you want your room to be cleaned or you want to go on do not disturb. The problem with these, of course, is that anybody can turn them over or they can fall off for any reason. I've had knocks in the past on my cabin door when I thought I was on do not disturb and the housekeeping team have said that they found it on makeup room. That's not ideal. On Prima, if you want to change your cabin to do not disturb, you just press a button inside the room and they can see it from outside the room. That way your room steward can see if you want the room made up or you want to be left alone and you can see from inside the room, you can check that do not disturb is on. It is genius. There's no other word to describe it. Genius. I love this cabin, but there is so much more to a cruise than just where you'll stay. To find out what the entertainment was like, what the food was like, and if I braved these scary things, check out this video over on my YouTube channel next. I'll see you there.